everyone. It is Tuesday. Welcome to our Transformation Healing Podcast. I'm your host, Ria Wang, a certified transformation life coach. I help my clients through the transformation healing to connect with the true unique power, transcend the limitation, and bring back the confidence, passion, joy with the clear vision of the best self. In the past years, I have been traveling around the world to learn and share how transformation that can transform our lives. In this podcast show, I have interviewed all of my guests from all over the world come to here to share their all of you that can help you get the tips then to with to help you with your challenge today my guests and annie and uh, niraga <laughs> i have to remember that name <laughs> niraga that is a little harder name so they believe the people as a well-being journey that everyone deserves to be healthy and supported Ani and Niraga inspire, encourage, and assess the people with the simple way to feel better, look better, move better, and live better. How wonderful is that? Welcome to Ani and Andy and Niraga. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here with me. Thank you. Hey, Thank you for having us. So, I always ask the people, my guests, first things is, tell me, or tell us where you guys come from. We are in um, Grass Valley, California. So we're between Sacramento and Reno. Uh, we often tell people it's the foothills of Tahoe. Oh, for the hotel. Yes, I was just, I was saying, uh, invite you guys come to my sun healing event. That's quite a bit of the drive, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> How yeah. about the Niraga? Where you come from? Um, I'm originally from Idaho, but then we landed here in Northern California and we've lived here for a good 20, 20 odd years. So, yeah. Oh, that's a long time. How is it that you guys like that? We love it here. Um, it's Northern California is beautiful. It's very, um, a lot of open space and um, a lot of communities are very connected to nature and um, it's it's a really beautiful place to live, yeah. <laughs> yes, I think this uh, just in general, this California is a beautiful place to live, right? It is, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we are fortunately blessed to live in this beautiful area, just. Yeah, it's amazing. So come to this show. So I wanted to, sh I, I would, I can't wait to hear how do you overcome with your challenge? We, we know in our life, we always go through with different challenges. So what is the big challenge that you guys overcome to become who you are today? Share that with us. Mm, I would say um, <clears throat> for me, one of the big cha biggest challenges is just overcoming myself, especially um, any negative tendencies or um, just becoming a better person, um, figuring out techniques that help me become the best version of myself. And um, also being a father of a almost nine-year-old girl, um, that's taught me a lot about myself <laughs> and about, about raising another human and just all the things you learn from each other, from yourself and from your child um, through that process is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think the reflections of who you come in contact daily with um, give you so much fuel to do the journey of trying to understand yourself better. We have a quote up on our office wall here that says mindset matters most. And I feel like Andy and I both, um, we've been married for a long time. And I feel like, um, especially in these last few years, that has really become kind of a core journey for us both individually. And then as a unit, as a family unit too, is to really work on, I think 
where your mind is and what you're telling yourself and what you're bringing in and how you relate that and the perspective you the perspective lens that you see that through really does affect how you experience life and i think that that's been a big focus for both of us is really working on our mindset and then that just filters out into everything else you know you start with the mindset and then you want to work with you know i feel like actually we sometimes see it as a triangle and we have, um, we break it down. I break it down into mind, body, and spirit. So starting in any one of those areas is going to help you to strengthen all the other areas. So if you start with your mindset, it's going to help you to be like, oh, I'm going to work on my body too. I'm going to work on my connection to a source and, or you can start with your body and that ultimately helps you work on your mindset as well. So I think those are our, our foundational tools mm -hmm. that we use both individually and as a unit as a family unit yeah definitely <laughs> definitely yes and i think uh, lately it's not just lately in the past few years especially in this covid time you know how how much people can struggling with a lot of anxiety with a lot of some situation like we cannot change you know when things happen so if that things happen you are in that uh, situation example you lost your job or you feel trapped in this uh, anxiety. You didn't know how to get out. So in that situation, how do you can help there um, with the mindset? What does that mean at that point the, about the mindset? How to get out in that situation to feel better? Like we talk about, but I want to feel better living the healthy lifestyle. How we do it? What is a simple way we can do it? Mm -hmm. Um, for myself and, and um, which I, I have gone through these struggles. I went through these struggles over the last few years. You know, I've definitely gone through my ups and downs and really one of the simplest tools for me is just coming back to gratitude, you know, really taking a moment to just be grateful for where I am in this moment and what I, all the blessings I do have. It's really like that. It sounds so simple, but it is so profound. If you can really just wake up and see something and be grateful for it. And then that will build Then build the next one. What's the next thing that you see that you can be grateful for? What's the next thing that, you know, I, I take it in breath. It can be so simple that, you know, bring it down to just breathing or looking out and seeing a bird or, you know, it, it really comes down to really taking it to baby, baby, minute steps, I think sometimes because the world was very uncertain. It still is. Life is very uncertain. And so giving yourself that moment, that little tiny, um, milestone, stepping stone of um, like in this moment, what can I be grateful for? In the next moment, what can I, and that really helps. I think for me, it helped. And I, I see it helps for other people too, is really breaking it down. And gratitude is one of the simplest forms, I think, to um, get out of any stuck, uncertain position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think gratitude is such a big thing and is potentially often overlooked. Um, just as a simple way to um, start feeling better. I find through myself and lots of people that I speak with, just that, you know, I, I strongly feel that what you think about comes about. So I think that it's important to, when you have gratitude, you start to feel better about your situation, even if it's just a little bit. And then uh, other things for me personally that I use that I consider to be anchors in my days and in my life is um, meditation. Like um, especially starting and ending the day with even, could even be five, 10 minutes. Um, ideally, I try to do more like 20. Um, that also journaling, which um, you know I wanna get more into. I haven't been doing it religiously, but I think also that goes with gratitude too. writing down things that went well during the day, you know, not not always focusing on things that aren't going well, which I feel like is an easy thing that we're that we're taught and we learn as we grow. And now I feel like we're trying to unlearn that and go the other way with it. Um, and also for me, exercise is a huge thing for me for um, just changing my mindset, changing my state, especially cardiovascular, really get in the body moving. And um, I just find after exercise, there's like a natural high that um, really is great for um, combating that state of uh, not feeling well or feeling stressed. And, um, you know, all those things that we all feel every day. 
And I feel like it's all about finding these little tools that we can use in those moments to just shift it a little bit um, makes such a huge difference, you know, for myself and for many people that I come in contact with. My mom used to say, um, just like if you're feeling stuck and I go through bouts of kind of just, um, I get so overwhelmed that I stop. And so this saying that she would have is just move the energy, just move the energy. And that's just, just get up, just stand up from what you're in, like move out of the fear or the overwhelm and just make one little movement and then shake that up, you know, move the energy. And I think that that that's another simple, just like mindset matters most focus on the gratitude, move the energy, these simple little phrases of like, and to, to take the action in it, you know, like, cause I can sit there and, and be in my overwhelm and, and um, kind of be in this stop stuck position. And then this little thing will just say, move the energy, move the energy, just get up and move. And um, that will lead to something, you know, that will lead to ne the next thing. So those are our little, some of our little tools and just, <laughs> I feel like um, one of the blessings of this whole journey with COVID, even though we were so isolated, I feel it really did bring us together. and everyone's kind of bringing what they have to share and their tools and their tips and their, their little bits and pieces to help one another. And I think that there's a lot of mentors out there that you can connect with and, um, and glean these little, these little things that help you in life. So there have been blessings in this darkness. There's been a lot of light too. Absolutely. That is beautiful. Uh, that's beautiful. Thank you for you both to share this. I think uh, every dark side, every dark, uh, even a dark emotions or uh, any things, they always have light there, right? Mm -hmm. Always have the light. It's just uh, how do you uh, switch your, your mindset? We, we talk about how to switch mindset. For me, I always tell my clients is how is that? Just like uh, think about the uh, heart, like the bottle of water. So when you're falling with that thoughts, with the like an unpleasant the thoughts so you are full you couldn't feel a lot of love couldn't feel better you have to empty out that time to raising you raising your gratitude love that you will be start to open the eyes to see the tree you even the same tree but they have different feelings right mm -hmm. Like just like you said, the, the beautiful is just move, move the energy. Everything in the world is the energy. When we stuck there, we call the stuck the energy stuck in the box or stuck in the bottle. How do we just shake out? Just standing up, start shaking. That's what I learned in the Kundalini meditation is just start shaking. When you start shaking, everything you hold in your body, that's release, release. Then walk outside, hug the tree, all of these little things, right? Yeah. That yeah. is beautiful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so come to us a profession of what are you guys doing that? How to make people feel better and how to live in the life with the healthy. So tell us a little bit about the, what is the work you do to help people. Do you have any example moments that uh, uh, help the you peop, you clients that they get so excited, shift their life to be better? Actually, what you just spoke of reminded me a lot of what we do when you're speaking of the glass being so full and that you need to empty it out. Um, a lot of the work that we do that's connected to the nutrition aspect of what we do um, in, uh, includes intermittent fasting, like supported botanical intermittent fasting. And we're really learning so much more about um, how beneficial that is for us on a physical body level to really just allow ourselves to slow down and not take anything else in, no, no more food in, just allow our bodies to have that time, that break time. And what can come about from that when you have that emptiness, then the universe wants to fill that vacuum up and you, you can fill it up with all the goodness that you wanna put in at that point. So that's when, when you, use that example of the glass being so full and you need to empty it out. I was like, oh, that's, that relates to how we support people with um, a, a guide through um, supported intermittent fasting. That's one aspect. Um, and you definitely see, we, we go on this journey too with all of our clients as well. And you see the, not only the physical benefits that happen from this, but the, the mental clarity that comes when you're not when your body's not so focused on digesting all of this food that we put in it, 
and you have you have this moment that um, in that emptiness, there's a clear path to connect to something greater that I think that is ultimately our all all of our journey in this life is connect making that connection and deepening and strengthening that connection that we have to source or God or the universe or whatever you want to call it. Um, and we've really found that intermittent fasting allows you this clear pathway to help with that. And that's one aspect of the pillars of what we help people with in the nutrition wellness journey that we go take people on. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. That, that is beautiful. I think it's just clean out. It's kind of like meditation. Is think People think about meditation. They maybe think about, oh, I cannot clean out my thoughts. I still, I sit there breathing, but my thoughts still full. I always tell the people, it's not sad. It's you have to clean out the thoughts. It's just each time you inhale, then you exhale, you pass. When you have a path, you create the gap, just like you said. So when you start to put the food, then when you start fasting, probably you give that space, let that space rest, then let that space to reconnect with the nature. That yeah. brings more health my side, health body, health living with in general, right? Yes, mm -hmm. and I think it yeah. is that that great pause. It's that pause between the inhale and the exhale, between taking food in and and not taking any food in. It's that moment of the pause where that connection is really there. Everything else is going to happen. The thoughts are going to come. The thoughts in. The thoughts out. The the breathing in, breathing out. All of that is going to always take place. But it's those moments of pause in between that are can be really profound and profound connection to not only yourself, but the greater self. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think, that, um, I think lots of people have misconceptions about, um, cleansing or fasting and, um, like there's so many different ways to do it that are like, make it doable, even if you're in a busy day or, um, I just feel like we educate a lot of people who come really fearful of, um, that they're not going to be able to eat food for a certain amount of time or and that's why I love that we offer um, both bot botanicals and other things to just keep your blood sh sugar um, just right enough to get you through the day and just make it doable and that's what I find a lot of people are able to do it and it's not like they expected it was much easier and there's actually there's a clarity that comes through that process as well um of, of i find personally anyway where the mind clears and there's an energy flow because yeah you're not digesting f lots of food all day long which actually sometimes makes you feel sluggish or tired and um you know beyond the um, cleansing you know then we coach people on then flooding the system with um superfoods and uh, combined with a healthy diet and you know like like we talked about before where Naraga was talking about the triangle, that's what I'm finding is when people go through these systems and they, for one, they didn't realize like that they haven't felt that great in a, in a long time, sometimes years, sometimes decades, because they've just gotten used to feeling that way. So one of the great things I find both for myself and with clients and friends and family is that they really, um there's like a reawakening where they notice they're feeling better and that that then aligns with the other with the mind the mindset starts to get freed up and then the spirit because i think it influx like it flushes in energy into your into your spirit as well and that's kind of the that's the great part i like about what what we're able to offer people is really a a, a reawakening to life um, you know, through these simple and convenient systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's wonderful. So the uh, question is, so I, I know the fasting for me is really difficult. Uh, I tried before. And uh, if some people who have uh, um, diabetes, like a uh, high blood pressure, when they start to uh, have an empty stomach, when they feel hungry, you know, the blood pressure, uh, the, the sugar level is uh, uh, go up waved a lot. So cause uh, anxiety, uh, cause the stress. So what is the tips for the people like that? They have the... 
Well, the system that we promote and that we advocate is um, it's it's supported. So you're not just doing just 24 hours or 48 hours with any without anything, just water. Our system actually has a botanical um, botanical drink that you drink four times throughout the day that's balanced in all sorts of different um, aloe vera for the gentleness that there, it keeps you at a certain level and you take it throughout four times. So the system really is there's a, a simple system that keeps you. Um, it's supported. It keeps you supported instead of just going on this journey of like, okay, I'm just going to ram it through of 24 hours, just water. You know, it's like, it's a much gentler system. Um, before we found this journey that we now are on, I had tried multiple different cleansing. It was kind of a thing of mine that I like to kind of try different types. And, um, they were, a lot of them were a lot of suffering. <laughs> there was a lot of suffering involved and not to say that there's not a lesson to be learned in that, but, um, this way is just so much more gentle and so much more supported. So there's a botanical drink that supports you. And then you're also allowed certain, um, there's a there's a whole template that you can kind of follow and it allows you certain things to keep your blood sugar levels just balanced, just enough. But you keep it within that zone where you're not, your system hasn't turned into a digestive system. It's um, under a caloric uh, rate so that you're still just, you're still fasting, your body's still, re so, um, yeah, it's it's helpful that to be supported in a journey like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how long will it be that fasting? The period of time, the uh, with that. There's there's nightly. Yeah. Just just you can do it daily. We kind of think of it as um, I think of it sometimes. I relate it to going to the dentist. It's like you know, there's the daily. You can do a nightly cleanse. Um, and that would be like brushing your teeth nightly. And then That'd be you, overnight. So like from when you fall asleep till you wake up. But you would take the botanical supported cleanse um, drink to help you, your Before body that. to detox a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then there's a 24 hour, which I think would be more like, you know, maybe uh, flossing and brushing and really going for it, maybe using a sonic tooth care or something like that. And then there's a 48 hour, which a lot of things happen for your body when you have passed a threshold of um, 18 hours into the 24 hour into the 48 hour. There's um, your body goes into, um, it starts going into this zone where it starts to really work on your visceral fat, which is the fat that we hold that is um, very toxic and harmful for people. So when you go into that, that would be more like really going into the dentist and getting a deep clean. And I think that that's important, you know, to, to have your, allow your body that journey where it really gets that deep clean and you're really getting a really um, thorough flush. So. Yeah. Wow, that uh, sounds fascinating. I like how do you keep use the dentist. I don't, I scared going to dentist office, especially here that the draining is uh, my tea. It's, it's just, oh my God. <laughs> I, don't I, like... I can really, I really understand when you say that, how to connect with the dentist. <laughs> Imagine that. That's yeah. fascinating. I was think, yeah, I can't wait. I think next month, I'm going to the three days silence retreat. That will be, do you think that will be good time to cleaning? Because when we do the silence retreat, we don't eat much because we don't move much, you know? Right. So that is, will be good time for cleaning, you think? Yes. Is that cleaning will be, uh, people will be running the bathroom all the time or it's just in general, it's the same, doesn't change much? Yeah, no, ours is not any type of diuretic kind of cleanse. It's more of a cellular cleanse. It's working on the cellular level. So you're not running to the bathroom. You're not, um, you're not doing anything like that. It's, it's working on the cellular level. And in, in fact, that botanical drink is um, all these herbs and things like that that are working on plant medicine, working on your cellular level to help detox the, um, the impurities and the toxins that we gather in our cells. So it's helping to release those. So yeah, and of course, when you're doing a silent meditation, I mean, you're already diving deep on one level and one aspect of really going into that quietness and really cleansing out, you know, slowing down the thoughts, being in that pause moment much, much longer. So I feel like it would be a great time to do it. You know, I think um, it depends on where you're having your retreat. I, I know some, some retreats have a certain strict um, element of when you can take food or when you can take tea. So you'd have to see how that aligns for them. But yes, it would be a wonderful time to do that for sure. Mm. 
Thank you, thank you. Yes, that's the beautiful. I think thank you for you guys come to this show to share all of this. Even myself here about that, I get fascinated. That's oh, mm-hmm. I should clean. I think everybody needed to cleaning our mind, cleaning our body, cleaning us. Mm-hmm. Just in general, bring bring us to the Zen space with our heart, with our body, with our mind. Right. So I have a one client. Uh, was uh, not one client one um, in the group i've been talking about all of this my side the, the, how to bring the personal zen then he was asking me question let me read read this questions come to say he said is there a personal zen if we read if we read and study the zen the healings imagine in the zen journey that is being point to so there is no fake self in there is that is uh, i feel is uh, i wanted to ask uh, what do you think about the personal zen is that zen do we have a personal zen personal zen yeah zen what i mean say zen we could talk about the zen frequencies like z-e-n is peace calm uh, you can say the Buddha, we can say the Zen, Zen Mai. We will talk about the Mai side. Is that is connected with Zen also? Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, <I think> so. <laughs> yes, definitely. The, your own That's personal right. state of mind and state of being, I think, yeah. is the is a reflection of the Zen of the world, you know, and, and, the, and that there is that aspect out there. And I think that that's the journey that we're all trying to be in more often mm-hmm. ultimately you yeah. know i mean our highest selves want to be in that space of peacefulness and calm and tranquility and equanimity you know and the world gives us a lot of tumultuous um examples to go to all the extremes so finding that baseline where you're in that pause in that zen space i think that yes it's, it's the ultimate <laughs> journey and the ultimate goal i, I feel yes well and i think that from that space, you also, you attract that from life or from the universe or from God or from whatever you want to say it is. So I think that's another aspect of being in that space is that, you know, you, you attract good things and you attract good feelings. And, and then even when things maybe aren't so well, you're just more prepared to deal with that and to think through that in a healthy way instead of just getting completely thrown off center, you know, long term, which which happens sometimes. And uh, so I think, yeah, being in a Zen mindset is something we're striving for <laughs> moment to moment <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I think uh, to be the Zen space with the mindset, first of all, we have to take care of our body. This body as, as a temple, right? Like doing the cleaning, doing, doing the healthy workout. So anything is benefits for the body. So ta- come back to, so you see I'm jumping around with mind, jump around, connect with our body. So come back to our body. So what are the big benefits of the people did what is the first thing you guys promote or the the program the, what is the big benefits for that for the physical we do not we not talk about the zen now with a uh, physical body yeah, yeah i think oh just yeah. quickly one thing i think um for one is just the convenience i feel like at least in the nutrition realm of what we do um Many people, maybe they know what to do, but they're, they don't do it. Like they're not cooking three healthy meals a day or, um, you know, so I find through our, our systems offer um, something that's convenient, a way to know that you're going to get nourishment into your body no matter what um, daily. So I think that I find through lots of our clients, just the convenience part alone um, is really something that draws people in because, and like when you're traveling too, whether it's business or um, personal, it's nice to just know that your bases are covered, um, you know, when you're away from home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the nutrition aspect is giving you those, um, you know, some of the components that are involved in the nutrition system that we offer to create that on your own 
it would take you, you know, there would be so many different foods that you would have to, to prepare and it would take you so much time. And so the convenience of this, allowing it to just get in there and get in quickly. And then the fasting aspect, I think um, it's really helping you on a cellular level, um, which is, you know, detoxing the cells, but also helping you to kind of um, take the aging step backwards. You know, like if you give yourself this break, you're, you're actually, it's helping to reverse, not reverse, but to, to slow down the aging process. So there's that, that aspect too. So it kind of works on all these different levels and the different pillars. So. Or just healthy aging, even we work with mm. uh, many people just in that healthy aging space of, you know, yeah, I just noticed many people think that we're younger than we are. <laughs> and I think it's because of all these things, you know, um, both body, mind and spirit and, um, you know, working on all of those, um, you know, makes a big difference. I guess just as I think just you said, slow down your age, become more younger. That will be attract to a lot of people. We all want to be younger, younger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. beautiful. So thank you so much, you both. Thank you for coming to the show to share your wisdom and share your stories. Uh, so before you leave, I would like to ask them from my audience how people can find you guys. I know I posted all of you guys' website information on there. So now it's what is the easy way, just simple, then tell us how we can find you. Mm -hmm. I think, well, for me, it would just be on Facebook. Um, at Andy McKillop is uh, me on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook's yeah. probably, you know, um, one of the easiest ways. And I'm Naragama, N-I-R-A-G-A-N-A. -A -A. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now everybody knows. So if you want to feel younger, then live younger, feel better, live healthy lifestyle. Now you know where to find the Andy, Andy and the the uh, Niraga ni still have yeah. a little bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> how those are your name? So thank you, you both. This is really great to have you guys on the show. Then thank everyone, you. thank you. Thank you. So everyone, you know, next time I'm looking for what if you have your stories, you have your challenge, that how do you overcome with your challenging you like to share with the world. You can connect with me. You know how to find me on my show. Thank you, everybody. I will see you next week, next Tuesday.